Senator Warnock of Georgia is recognized. Thank you so very much, Chairman Brown. Uh, according to data from the 2020 American Community Survey, around 45% of Georgians spend more than 30% of their income on rent, and one in five spend more than half of their income on rent. We may assume that these numbers are from high rent cities, but that's not true. It's not just high rent cities. In both Jenkins County and Taylor County, two rural counties in the southeast part of my state, one out of every three households, one out of three, spends more than half their income on rent. Georgians are being crushed by rent all over the state. There's no question that we need more housing stock. And I support many initiatives that would do just that. But Georgians don't have the luxury to wait. They're trying to pay the rent right now. They can't wait several years for rents to fall. And so even as we put forward policy that would increase housing stock, we have to address the housing insecurity that people of Georgia are dealing with right now. Ms. Yentel, how long would you estimate that it will take for our housing supply to finally catch up to demand? It will take years, if not more than a decade. It's a matter of um, this restrictive local zoning that needs to be addressed and removed, right. and the supply chain issues and many more issues, workforce issues to build the housing. It will take many years for us as a country to dig ourselves out of the supply hole that we created. So we can't ma wave a magic wand. It won't go away next year. That's right. Or the year after that. That's right. Or the year after that. So it, presumably rents will continue to rise mm -hmm. in the meantime? They will continue to rise. Maybe they will start to come down. Even if they do, when we look back to pre-pandemic times, sure. many of those numbers in Georgia were likely the same. So even if rents come back to where they were before the pandemic, there are 10 million households throughout the country that are paying at least half of their limited incomes on rent. So yes, they will continue to struggle. So, so we had this problem prior to the pandemic, which, which, was, which was then exacerbated by the pandemic. So do you think that offering tax cuts to rent burdened families, to ordinary hardworking families would help bridge the gap until we can fully address the housing supply issue? Absolutely. Cash in people's pockets helps them pay their bills. And whether it's in the form of um, continued extended child tax credits, which did more to help alleviate child poverty in our country than um, anything in recent time, or whether it's in the form of uh, renters tax credits that can also support uh, low income renters to afford the rent, they can have a meaningful impact on housing affordability. Right. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of tax cuts for hardworking, ordinary families uh, who really could use it. Um, and it seems to me that we need to provide solutions now, given the housing supply issue for Georgians who are feeling squeezed by the rent. And that's why I'm offering and working on legislation right now to do just that, offer tax cuts uh, to families with runaway uh, rent costs. Um, I want to pivot to another question in a few minutes I have. The, the Low Income Housing Credit Program, also known as LIHTC, is the most important system for supporting the development of affordable housing. Since Congress created it, uh, the LIHTC program has financed over 3.6 million affordable rental units. However, this affordability is on, only maintained during the tax credit's time period which is at least 15 years, but could potentially be much longer. One way the affordable period can be reduced, though, is if the property owner requests regulatory relief through a qualified contract. Um, Ms. Yentel, if I can ask you again, can you say more about what it means for a LIHTC property owner to request a qualified contract? What is that? So it means that owners can essentially get out of the length of the affordability requirement under the low-income housing tax credit program. It's something of a loophole in the so, program 
that so, needs to be closed. Great. I'm sorry to interrupt that, but I'm going to be out of time in just a moment. So if another <laughs> entity buys this property, they could raise the rent. That's right. Even after the federal government has expended resources to build and maintain that property. Do, do owners commonly inform the tenants of their buildings that their property might be sold and lose its affordability requirements? They don't. They do not. Do you think it would be helpful for HUD to collect and publish data on the LIHTC program? For instance, whether property owners have waived the right to qualified contracts, would that be helpful information? To Absolutely. More transparency in all federal housing programs is a good thing. At the National Income Housing Coalition, we have a national housing preservation database where we show where properties are at risk, not under qualified contracts, but where their affordability is expiring in coming years to give that data and transparency for local communities to come up with solutions. But HUD and the Department of Treasury can and should do more. Thank you so much. Uh, LIHTC has been very important uh, around the affordab affordability question, and I'm working on legislation also that will allow us to collect and study data from the LIHTC properties in order to better the program. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Senator Warren.